everyone, welcome to Church of the King. I'm Angel. And I'm Christian, and we are so honored to get to be your host here and just get to spend a little time with you here at church. Yeah, absolutely, and I have a question for you. Have you been enjoying our series? We as a church have been going through a series called Better, where we are studying, using God's word, how to become better and healthier in our relationships. And I have to say, it has been amazing. Yeah, I know, I have so enjoyed this series. Uh, what about you? Hopefully, you would answer, like me, that you have loved getting to learn how to get better at our relationships. But I wanna encourage you right now, listen, this isn't just for, for you and me. This service, the message today, the Word of God is for everybody. So why don't you take a minute right now and think about who you can bring along with you to service today. Hit that share or invite button and invite someone to service with you today. It's not too late. Yes, and as you're inviting people to join, we're gonna go into one of my favorite times and that is worship. Here at Church of the King, we believe one of our core values is we put God first and we're gonna do that right now in worship. So go ahead, put away all distractions and really engage as we sing these songs together. And we'll see you here right after. worship our God together. Special welcome to all those joining us, our online family. You came to the right place. Come on, our God is here and worthy of all of our praise. We sing. Oh, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaking. Sing this 
together. Rain came. you are for us always. God, that you will never fail us. You never have. You never will. And we can stand here today in boldness, confidence, knowing that you are here with us even now, right here in this moment. And Lord, there's nothing that we want more than your presence right now. So as we continue to worship together, we open our hearts to you, Jesus. And we just rest in who you are, God. We rest in all of your goodness, in the peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we rest in the freedom that is in your presence, Jesus. We were more of you, Lord. Yes, the world will bow down and say, Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be. 
the grave for you. There's nothing that he wouldn't do for you. He loves you so much. And so whatever it is that you might be facing today, maybe you came in here believing for something today, he wants to meet with you right now. So just offer that up to him. Right now in this moment, just say, God, I trust you. I have confidence in you. You've been so faithful and I know you will continue to be faithful. And we can thank him in advance for his provision. So Jesus, we trust you. Yes, we rest in who you are, God. We say that you're worthy. You've paid it all for us and we'll continue to trust you, Lord. was my cross you bore so I could
amazing time of worship together. I really do love that we start off our service every single week by giving God glory and praise and really thanking him for what he's done in our lives and, and thanking him for who he is to us. And hey, if you're just joining us, my name is Simon Anderson. I have the privilege of serving as the online campus pastor here at Church of the King. And we're so glad that you're in church with us today. And if I haven't met you yet, or if this is maybe your first time, man, thank you so much for being here. And it's nice to meet you. If I haven't connected with you yet, man, it's my privilege to, to get to talk to some of our online family every single week. I, I make these phone calls to people that fill out our connection card. And it's my favorite part of the whole week to get to talk to you, our online family. So if I haven't had the privilege of meeting you personally, yes, you, then I would love to hear from you. And the easiest way that you can let us know that you're here is by texting the word connect to the numbers 822-822, or you can click the link in the chat room right now. And that allows me to get your information, really just follow up with you, connect with you over the phone and, and hear a little bit of your story. Well, speaking of connecting with people, two weeks ago, my wife and I had the privilege of going on vacation to California, but we got to meet up with some of our church online family members. We took some detours and got to meet up with some of them in person. And one of those people is named Vito Di Camillo. He lives in Orange, California, and we got to get brunch and really connect with him. And I mean, that was so special for me as a, as a pastor and someone who's, who's been in his life for a little while now where I've met with him on Zoom, I've talked with him in the chat room, but to really meet with him face to face, to give him a hug and connect with him in that way was so special to me. So let's check out this quick video about my meeting with Vito and I'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Simon Anderson. I'm out here in Orange, California with my friend Vito DiCamillo. Man, this guy has been a part of Church of the King since 2019 Easter service online and uh, is a faithful member of our church, serves on our online dream team. Vito, just want to say thank you so much for all that you do. You're a huge blessing to our church family. And Anything you want to say to the people? Thank you. My pleasure. And hello, everyone out there. God bless you. I appreciate you all. And I think it's wonderful that he came out to come visit and stuff like that. I love you guys, thank you. Yeah, Rebecca and I are out on vacation in California, so we decided we definitely didn't want to pass this moment by without uh, going to see one of our good friends, Vito. So uh, thanks for checking us out. You guys enjoy the rest of your time and we'll see you soon. God bless. Vito, and not just Vito, but every single one of you that's part of our online church family, we love that you're a part of it. And for those of you that live anywhere else in the United States, outside of our local campuses, or maybe even the world, man, thank you for believing in what God's doing here at Church of the King. Thank you for being a part. And, you know, someone like Vito was changed because a person just sent him a simple invite to an Easter service in 2019. And now three years later, Vito is living his life on purpose. He is encouraging people. He really is one of the most life-giving people that I've ever met. And he's now on our online host team. And God has really used our church to speak life and encouragement into his life and and so thank you for being a part of what God's doing here and and on top of that thank you for being generous you know we do this thing called kingdom builders and what are kingdom builders it's people who believe in the mission and the vision of Church of the King of reaching people and building lives that they give anything over their tithe to invest and to fund the mission of what God is doing here at Church of the King so if you're a kingdom builder I just want to say personally Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for believing in what God's doing, for partnering with us as a church and, and really for partnering with God as we're continuing to reach people like Vito all over the United States and all over the world. It really is making an eternal impact and we're so grateful 
for you. And if you haven't jumped in and, and decided to trust God with your finances, whether that's your, just your tithe or above and beyond that to be a part of Kingdom Builders, let me just encourage you to step out, trust God, and, and really put your faith in what God is doing here and see what God will do as he uses you and your generosity and your sacrifice to really change people's lives. And there's something so special about being a part of what God's doing in that way. And so if you want to jump in and give, man, today is your day. This weekend is a great, a great time to jump in and be a part of being a giver, of living generously. And so as you give today, we make it really easy. You can give in one of three ways. The first one is online at churchoftheking.com. The second one is in the Church of the King app, which is a great resource for you to download if you haven't already. And the third one is by mail. So again, thank you for your generosity. It's making a huge, huge difference. Well, with that being said, we're gonna jump into week four of our series called Better. Pastor Steve has an amazing message for us. I can't wait to hear it. So let's really get our notes out, let's engage, and let's get ready to receive what God has for us through this message. It's gonna be amazing. So let's check it out and we'll see you after. Welcome all of our campuses to week four of our series entitled Better. Come on, let's just welcome all those that are joining us. Man, we are fired up. So glad to have all of you with us. So we are in a five-part series on relationships. Here's what I said week one. Good, healthy relationships don't happen by accident. In other words, nobody just drifts into good relationships. It takes intentionality. It takes learning the Bible. A matter of fact, the Bible is not just about how to get our soul in heaven for eternity. Now, trust me, that's the ultimate. But to know Christ, to walk with Jesus, to spend eternity with him in heaven. But the Bible also talks about how to get along with one another down here. It's amazing how practical the scriptures are. So week one, we talked about how to have a better marriage. Matter of fact, Dr. Les Parrott, Week one, and then week two, I talked about 10 rules for fighting fair in marriage. I talked about conflict and resolution in our relationship. Last week, we talked about the next generation. And I've got great faith for your kids. I've got great faith for my kids. I believe God wants to pour out his Holy Spirit and raise up a Jesus generation, a youth revival in our nation and around the world. How many of y'all believe that? I believe God wants to do that. Today, I want to talk to you about Better relationships in church. Better relationships in church. It's interesting when you think of the word church, there's lots of images that are conjured up in people's mind. What a church is, well, a church, that's obvious. You know, the church is the building. Well, the church gathers in a building, but the church is not necessarily a building. The church is the, church is the people of God that gather together where the presence of God is. It's the church. It's interesting, the different metaphors in the Bible when you think of the word church. <clears throat> Here it is, the temple of God. Watch this. The people of God. The family of God. Here's another one. The body of Christ. Think about that. You ever thought about that for a moment? The body of Christ. You know, we say terms, we just say terms, we just throw them out real quick. And, and we don't think about, it. let's stop for a moment. Let's stop for a moment. The body of of Christ. He is the head, right? The head, and we are the what? Say it, the body of Christ. So in other words, if Jesus wants to do something in our communities where all of our campuses are or wherever there are Bible preaching churches, how does he do it? He does it through the body of Christ. If he wants to lead somebody to Christ, how does he do it? He does it through the body of Christ. How will they know unless somebody tells them about Jesus? How does he do it? He does it through the body of Christ. 
Let me give you another term. You guys ready for this one? The household of God or the house of God. In the Bible, it's really cool. When you open the Bible, there's a lot of themes. Again, the people of God, the family of God, the bride of Christ. There's another one that's used in the New Testament. The body of Christ, the bride of Christ. But here's another one. The house of God. The household of God. That's another metaphor in the New Testament, actually in the Old and the New Testament, that talks about God's family. So what is the house of God? It's when God's people gather together and God's presence is there. Yes, in the Old Testament, the house of God. And yes, in the New Testament, there is a physical location where let us go unto the house of the Lord. But it's more than just brick and mortar. It's the people of God that gather together in the name of Christ where God's presence is. The house of God, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the temple of God. What is that? It is the gathering of God's people where God's presence shows up. It's all throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Psalms 26 verse 8, Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. Psalm 69, 9, for zeal for your, come on everybody say it, house, your house consumes me. Now many of you live in a house, many of us live in a house, or different types of configurations of that. And the point of having a house is that people live in a house. God's house, it's not just brick and mortar. It's the people of God that gather together where God's presence is. So the body of Christ is the same as the bride of Christ. It's the same of the temple of God. It's the same as the house of God. It's the, it's, it's, it's the body of Christ. It's the people of God, the family of God gathering together and God's presence shows up. And by the way, I believe the church is the hope of the world because Jesus is hope for the world. I believe that with all of my heart. Guys, we live in a broken, fractured, hurting world. That's why the body of Christ, filled with the Spirit of God, listen, is the hope of the world because Christ is in his church. Christ is in his church and the presence of God is there. The people of God being equipped to know who they are in Christ and who God is. The theme of the church is all throughout the scripture. The family of God, the people of God, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, the house of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. The church, which is his body, the church, be careful if there's a, it's kind of a cool in thing to people to hate on the church. Well, the church is this. And of course we know the church is imperfect because it's got you in it. Boy, was that too strong? I'm sorry. And me in it. (laughs) Trust me. Let's be careful because Christ is committed to his church. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. The church, which is his body. The church is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So... How does he want to fill the community? By the way, serve day. I want to thank all the volunteers, hundreds and over a thousand volunteers at all of our six locations. Can we give it up for the thousand volunteers yesterday at serve day? You guys are amazing. (laughs) Amazing. Had the opportunity to go to a bunch of different ones of our projects and being with people and helping all. just, Just my heart is proud as a pastor to see all of those red shirts out there. I mean that. So how does God do that? What do we want for people when they come to Church of the King? Well, I hope it's what every biblical church, every New Testament church, every church that preaches Christ, I hope it's what every Bible-centered church, Bible-saturated church would want. Number one, we want to help people connect with God. By by the way, this is our next steps. We want to help, number one, people to connect with God. Number two, we want to help people grow in community. Pastor Steve, can you go to heaven if you don't walk with other brothers and sisters in Christ? Yeah, you can go to heaven if you, if you know Jesus. That, that's the only prerequisite. But I don't believe that you'll fulfill your potential unless you learn how to grow in, brothers and, in relationship with other brothers and sisters. Grow in community. We, we, that, that's why our church is set up with small groups. That's why our church is set up the way it is. Why? With, with, with every healthy church ought to have small groups or Sunday school or something where believers can meet in small groups and learn the Bible together and pray together and do life together and care for one another and encourage one another. How many of y'all believe that's God's will? That's God's will. 
So what do we want for Houston Church? We want you to connect with God. I'm not going to just tell you a poem and open the Reader's Digest. I'm going to open the Word of the Living God and tell you that Christ is the hope for your life. And if you put your faith in Christ, you'll spend eternity with Christ if you'll trust Christ as your Savior. Every church that is a Bible teaching church ought to help people connect with God. Number two, grow in community. And then number three, discover their gifts and their purpose. You've got spiritual gifts. This is not just all, wind the preacher up, let's just watch him. He was a seven today, a six today. He can't make up his mind. Is he a kid? Why does he wear clothes like that? Does he wear suits? Does he wear a t-shirt? What does he wear? Hopefully church is more than evaluating my midlife crisis. Come on, are y'all with me or not? Hopefully. Wait a minute, y'all shouldn't have clapped to that. Well, the reality is, is that church is about you being, knowing God, growing in community, and then me helping to open the Bible, Ephesians chapter four, and then equip you to discover who you are in Christ, and you go make a difference in the world, which is number four, make a difference. So our church is designed to help you connect with God, grow in community, discover your purpose, and then go make a difference. Every church that's a biblical, healthy church should do that. We want to help people. Life is about relationships, knowing God and walking with people. Do you know that the church of Jesus Christ, healthy churches, Bible churches, where you can get born again, where you can know God, all those churches ought to be about two things. Number one, help people to know God. And number two, help people to walk in discipleship and community with one another. Let me just say this. This is important. The church of Jesus Christ is actually the only organism, organization, on the earth that helps people with the two most important things in their lives. Do you know when you go, when you get to that moment of death and you're laying on your deathbed, you you do guys, you guys, I remember I've been there many, many times with people. Nobody cares about how much is in their 401k. Of course, there's importance related to that. I get all that, but at that point, not a big deal. Let me tell you what's important. Let me tell you what's really important. Your relationship with God and your relationship with those that are close to you, your natural and your spiritual family. I'm telling you, there's nothing else when you're about to step into the next life. And the church of Jesus Christ is the only institution, whatever you want to call it, organization, organism, institution, that actually helps you on those two principal things, relating to God and relating to one another. The church is God's plan A. There's no plan B. There's no plan B. There's no plan B. I could spend literally hours up here giving you story after story after story of people whose lives were banged up and bruised up. They came into the house of God, the house of God, the church, the body of Christ. They came to the house of God. God put their marriage back together. God got them delivered from drugs. God, got, God healed them. They got saved. I mean, I, listen, we, matter of fact, baptism weekend, we got all kind of people being baptized publicly declaring what? That they're trusting in Christ as their Savior. The church of Jesus Christ. Everybody say the church. Everybody say the house of God. Everybody say the body of Christ. Oh, man, that's rich. It's powerful. It, it's, 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 it's where I met Christ. I met Christ in the church. I was presented Christ and who he was. I, I, I got discipled in the church. I learned how to pray in the church. I learned how to read my Bible in the church. I was discipled. I was invested. I was coached up by men in the church. They poured into my life. I, I, the church. Listen, I met my wife in the church. By the way, where else should you look? Just look around. Come on. Maybe you may meet your spouse here. Come on. Look around. Unless you're married. Don't look around. Come on. You know what I Look straight ahead. <laughs> Here's my point. My point is it's the church. Everybody say the church. The body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the household of God, the house of God. These aren't my terms. These are biblical terms. Biblical terms. I have people say, you know, I've heard people say, well, I love Jesus. I just don't like the church. Be careful. That's usually from a heart that's been hurt or an arrogant heart. I think they're better than Christ. I think they're better than all the people. You're better than Paul. You're better than Peter. You're better than all the saints and all the apostles and all the generations of Christians. No, let me tell you something. Pastor, can you you go to heaven without being involved in other Christians? Yeah, you can go to heaven if you know Christ. But let me tell you, you won't fulfill your potential. You need brothers and sisters. I need you and you need me, by the way. 
And by the way, we don't think Church of Kings is the only church. There's lots of great churches, Bible preaching churches in communities where all of our campuses are. But I'm going to tell you something. Be very careful hating on the church. It's kind of an in thing now, social media. The church is this. The church is that. The church is this. We don't go to church anymore because, you know, we just have a personal relationship with God. No, you're arrogant and you think you're better than everybody. No, the reality is, is that we need one another. And be careful. Here's what Jesus said about his church, his bride, his body, his house. Here's what he said. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Christ also loved the what? Come on, say it. The what? Church. It's God's plan A. There is no plan B. He loved the church and he gave himself for her. Ooh. He died for the church. He died for people. I know there's imperfections in the church. I know that. But it's still God's plan A. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my, come on, everybody say it, church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. If that's Jesus' point, again, I, if I've had people say, well, I'm looking for you know, a different church. I'm looking for the perfect church. Don't go there. The moment you go to a perfect church, you'll mess it up. Because <laughs> you're imperfect. By the way, I'm imperfect. I'll mess it up. And I'm very transparent about my frailties. You know, I, I tell this story. You know, one time this lady goes, Pastor, I just love you. I just love this church. You just talk about how messed up you are like us. <laughs> That's like not all I talk about, you know. <laughs> so I get it. We're on a journey together. But I'm going to tell you something. Be careful hating on God's church. We, uh, that's why we honor other churches that preach Christ and him crucified. Where you need to get born. We honor churches. We're not the only church. Churches that are committed to scripture. They're committed to the inspiration of scripture. That the Bible that is the word of God. We honor those churches. Isn't that right, Church of the King? We honor other churches. There's a passage of scripture that helps us understand the importance of how we can flourish when we're planted in God's house. Psalms 92 verse 12 says this, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted, here it is, in the house of the Lord, planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age, and they shall still be fresh and flourishing. The righteous. Who, is, who are righteous? We're not righteous based upon our behavior. We're righteous first based upon our trust in Christ. He makes us righteous. He washes us with his blood. Those that are planted somewhere. It's, it's not the good that we do that qualifies us to be righteous. It's the good that Christ has done for us. But... But as righteous men and women of God that have trusted Christ, he said his intention for us is not just to be saved, but to flourish. What does it mean to flourish? To grow, to blossom, to bloom. Well, why does God want us to be planted so that we can flourish? Everybody say flourish. To flourish means to be strong. It means to thrive, to grow, to produce life and fruit, even in your old age. By the way, two images here. Really cool. One image in Psalms 92 is that of a palm tree. It's really interesting. He says this, those that are playing in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Number one, like a palm tree. What's a palm tree? A palm tree, it's interesting about the root structures of a palm tree. They, they go down and then it grows kind of this way. If you understand a root structure of palm tree, isn't it amazing palm trees? I mean, they can be like in the middle. Of course, we live in a hurricane area, you know, and so we, we understand when. Isn't it interesting how, you know, you'll have like pine trees just snap, 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 snap. But that palm tree, you know, 100 mile an hour, it's like, and right when that wind passes, it goes, thunk. I think that God wanted to give us an analogy that regardless of what hell comes against you, if you're planted in God's house with his people, plunk, you're going to, plop, you're going to jump back up. In other words, you're not going to go down. He says, you're going to flourish like a palm tree. There's a flourishing to the person of God that is planted in Christ and with the people of God. And then he says, listen to this. He says two things. He says, number one, you're going to flourish like a palm tree. And then he says, you're going to grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You know what a cedar in Lebanon? Look it up later. Not now where I'm preaching, but look it up. 
2,000 year old cedars they still have in Lebanon that are still strong. This speaks to me, watch this, this speaks of two things, durability and longevity. Durability. That as we walk with God, sometimes there's high, sometimes there's low. But can I tell you something? If we're planted in God's house, boom, we're going to come back up. And guess what? In our old age, longevity, we're still going to produce fruit. We don't have to get bitter. We can get better and better and better. And why? Because we can be like cedars in Lebanon, strong in our old age. Man, I love it when I see the couples in our church or the people in our church, regardless, singles who are old age, maybe they're widow, widow, well, I mean, say, and they're still loving God, still excited, still on fire for God. That's what the Bible says. We can be that. We can experience that. We can still flourish. We can grow old and strong. But here's the caveat. You guys ready? Here it is. Here's the caveat. Well, pastor, I want that. I, I, want, I want to flourish. I want to be durable. When hell comes against me, when, when I go through highs and lows, I, I want to I have longevity to my spiritual life. I don't want to just, well, I was on fire for God back in the 70s. And I was kind of just, gonna, hopefully I go to heaven. We can be on fire all the way to the end, producing fruit in the kingdom. But here's the caveat, Psalms 92, 13. Who, who are those? Who are those that can actually experience the flourishing? Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Not just the casual inquirer. Not as well, I said a prayer. No, those that are planted. Everybody say planted. Those that are planted. What does it mean to plant? To put something firmly and strongly in a particular place. So I want to ask everybody, all of our campuses, one question. Who would like to flourish and be durable and have longevity and fruitfulness to your life all the way to the end? Come on, raise your hand if you all like that. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the caveat. Here it is. Here it is. You guys ready? Everybody look at me. Here it is. Here it is. One key. You got to be planted in God's house. So the Bible says you got to be planted. You got to be planted in the house of God. The fact of the matter is, is that there are many people that I believe are born again that for whatever reason, they've never gotten planted in the house of God. For, for example, let me just say this. Here, here are seeds. These are apple seeds and I've got different seeds, and some of you guys, you know, you can buy seeds anywhere, right? Lowe's, Home Depot, I mean, some of you, some of y'all have seeds of all different kind of things, you know, these little, these little, you know, uh, paper things, and they're in shelves in your garage, you know, and you label the seeds and all, so, so they're, they're, let me tell you something, in this seed is tremendous potential, watch this, of what this seed can become, but matter of fact, in this seed is actually an orchard, it's not just a tree, it's not just apples, but it's potentially an orchard. But it doesn't matter what potential's in the seed if it doesn't cooperate with the process. In other words, there's another component just to the seed. In other words, this seed has to be, it has to be what? Everybody say it, planted. If it doesn't plant, it doesn't reach its full potential. Pastor Steve, can you be born again, not be part of a local church, not be walking with other Christians and still go to heaven? Yes, but you'll never fulfill your potential. Never fulfill your potential. Even Jesus at the point of Garden of Gethsemane, he brought Peter, James, and John. Christ died for his church. You gotta be planted. Planted in the house of God. Where it's, you know, you gotta walk through things with people. You gotta walk through disappointments. You gotta walk through conflict. You, 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 gotta, you, gotta, you gotta walk through things. You gotta be planted. I understand we live in a mobile society. I understand that, you know, people, you know, you know, the job transfer. I get all that. Of course, we have a lot of people in our church. I get all that. But if you move into a new community and it's five years later and you've never found a local church, it's probably not the community church's problems. Because what we're saying, well, there's nobody, nobody's good enough. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I mean, that's like, it's like, try, 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 it's like, I'm not getting married until I find the perfect spouse. Uh, that's going to be real successful. I'm not perfect. Jesus, want, Jesus wants you to flourish and bloom in every area of your life, spiritually, emotionally, vocationally, intellectually, every area of your life. But you've got to be planted. Everybody say planted. So number one, sometimes people get born again, they never get planted in a local church. Maybe they got planted under some ministry that said, well, you don't need a local church, all you need is God. You, know, God. you just sit in Starbucks and read your Bible all day long. Well, what I found is that Jesus talked about his church. He talked about the body of Christ. One's a hand and one's an eye and one's an ear. Are y'all with me? It's like all over the Bible. 
Number two, sometimes people, well, they get deplanted. What do I mean by deplanted? Well, they 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 plant, but then they just they just they just they just deplant themselves. They just they they plant. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get planted. Oh, this is nice. And oh, and then one little thing happens. Well, they didn't call me back. I was on the dream team. They didn't call me back. I put all. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't like these people. They get their feelings hurt. Something happens to them, and they deplant themselves. Why? They get hurt. They they get distracted. Sometimes it's not hurt. Sometimes they just get distracted, and they say, "You know what? I'm going to plant myself." But you know what? Uh, just, if if anything, I, that's it. I'm out of here. Those that are planted. Everybody say planted. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. God's. By the way, this message is for you so that you can flourish in every area of your life. Plant it in the house of God. So sometimes people never plant. Maybe they had wrong teaching. Maybe they just got hurt. Maybe they just, there's a, or maybe they planted and they just plucked themselves up. Or here's the third one. Sometimes, get, sometimes people get planted in bad sandy soil. You ever notice in the South that we often have this like sandy soil deal? You got to like put topsoil on the top to get things to grow at times. So sometimes it's just, sometimes the soil, look if you're over here, it's, it's, sometimes it's just, it's hard. The soil, it's, it's like, you got to, it's just the soil. I don't know if y'all can see that. Sometimes the soil is just not, it's so, so, and, and so you're trying to plant a seed. And so here, sometimes we're just planted in the wrong places in the, in the wrong soil. So in other words, sometimes it's, it's just hard. And so sometimes when we're planting ourselves in something that God never intended for us to be planted in, it, we don't bloom and we don't blossom the way. So sometimes we're planting ourselves in things that God never intended. He wanted you to be planted in the house of God. That's where flourishing. But the fact is you've planted yourself in endless activities every weekend forever. Amen. Pastor, I'm excited. 2022 is a new year. I'm going to serve God. They're in church first weekend in January. Man, I'm fired up, pastor. I'm so excited. Pastor, I'm a hunter, you know, so it'll be the next three weeks. I want to make sure to get the end of deer season. <laughs> Pastor, I'm in four Mardi Gras parades, so that does uh, in February. I'm just out. I'm out there. I'm out the first week. I'm out the second week. I'm out the third week. I'm in Mardi Gras. Like this year. And then, Pastor, a uh, Irish Italian. I'm Italian, so we got to go to that parade. My wife's Irish. Got to go to that parade the following week. And then we like French Quarter Fest. Got to eat the food, 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 food. Got to eat the food. Jazz Festival. Had another jazz festival, you know, like 20 years. So we got to go. Jazz, jazz, jazz. Yeah. They end in a church. It's mid May. It's like, man, we, I don't know why I'm dry spiritually. Get real quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> and I'm going to go there. Sometimes we plant ourselves in travel baseball or soccer. That's the American family today. Ah, pastor, I can't go to church. And every now and then we'll watch you a little bit online. But really, we're just so busy. Is that real? Is that real? And listen, I'm into sports. I could beat every single one of y'all in high school, just to let you know that. Okay, I'm playing. So I'm into sports. But I'm going to tell you something. And I, and I hunt, by the way. But I'm going to tell you something. God, though God intended you to be planted in his house, and then you do other things, not be planted in those things that every now and then you do God's house. Do you see the difference? I, I'm going to go there and say, well, my job, my job. Yeah, your job, that's very important, your job. But if it's seven days a week, you never have enough time to be in a Bible study. You never have time to go to church. You never have time. I don't know. There's, it's, it's just not a balance. Be careful when God prospers you that your money doesn't create options that moves you further away from the house of God. Just remember that. I've seen people hungry for God, had nothing. They got prosperous. God gave them money. God raised them up. You can't find them. Why? They got three houses. You never know where they are. They're never committed anywhere. They're not committed to the house of God. They're committed to leisure is what they're committed to. Wow. Pastor, why are you talking this way? Because I'm concerned for your soul. And I'm concerned for anybody that calls me a pastor. And every pastor should. Sometimes the seed doesn't get in the ground. It's not planted. Sometimes it's planted, but it's taken up. Sometimes it's planted in the wrong soil. Pastors, do you believe in athletics? Yes. Do you believe in all those things? Those things are vacation. They're all wonderful. But those are the exception. The American church has switched. Now it's the rule. Now it's we're planted in everything else but the house of God. And the exception is, hey, let's go to church three times a year. And we wonder why spiritually we're anemic. We gotta be planted in the house of God, planted in relation, planted in small group, planted being a part of God's house. It's how you grow strong spiritually. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes people plant themselves in great soil and they flourish. 
They get stronger and stronger. That's why we want your kids in the house of God. That's why we do everything that we do. So that you can grow. So that you can go strong. Now, I'll be honest. There's some Christians. I'm almost finished. They're what I call root-bound Christians. Their roots are bound. They're planted, but kind of. What I mean is they'll go to a church or get involved, but yeah, but yeah, I just don't like that church. Why? Well, you know, the pre preacher, he just tries to be too funny. He should preach verse by verse by verse by verse by verse by verse by verse. They're not deep enough. So we'll just go to another place over here. Okay. We'll just go over here. Well, you know, this show, I mean, we should worship for three hours. We should be able to bring our lawn. Ah, we don't like that. We'll go over here. Well, Pastor Steve, you know what? Well, you know, he's not educated. Oh, now he is educated. Well, now he relies on his education. He doesn't rely on the Holy Spirit. Let's pick ourselves up over here. We'll just go over here. And his clothes, can he make up his mind? Does he wear a business suit? Is it a little pocket square? Is it look like he dresses from Gap and he's 14? Let's just pick ourselves up over here. Where should we go? And just every now and then, Pastor, just Pastor, just give us a little bit. We just want to live. Just spray on us. Don't go. Don't. don't we don't want to plant. We don't want to. We don't want to walk through conflict. We just just spray. Just give us a little. Just make us feel good. Because if not, we'll poof, just pick ourselves up. And just go somewhere else. That's the American church. That was good preaching. I don't care if you liked it or not. And let me just say this. We're not the only church. There's lots of good churches. So let me just say that. Let me, all I'm saying is get planted in a church. In a Bible-saturated, Bible-preaching where you can get saved and disciple church. That's what I'm saying. Everybody say plant it. Let your roots go down deep where you commit. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For, he, for they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Do you know what the point of being planted? You know why it's so important to be planted? Listen, I want everybody to hear me every campus. You know why it's so important? Because if you don't get planted, you don't produce fruit. And the point of an effective life, a life of significance, is where you impact other people, spiritually speaking. Listen to me. Listen. Have you ever seen an apple limb, apple tree limb that has apples? Have you ever noticed they don't do this? I'm going to have one of my apples today. In other words, apple trees don't eat apples. The point of having a seed planet, which produces a healthy tree, produces healthy apples, is so that people can pick them. The point of putting your roots deep is so that people can eat from your tree. And the point of being healthy and flourishing is not for us, but it's for them. Who's them? Anybody that needs Christ. It's anybody that needs Christ. That's what's important. That's why it's important to be bound. Where, where do you disciple? That's what people, oh, I don't go to church. Well, who are you making disciples? Who have you led to Christ and who are you discipling? That's what God's called us to do. My little daughter was at service last night. She goes, Dad, you were hurting those apples. I said, it's a point. Fresh and flourishing. Yeah. Whew, man. God wants us to, everybody say plant it. God wants you to flourish in every area of your life. Every area of your life. I believe God's intention is for us individually. In this seed is a potential orchard. Pull that picture up if you could. If you get planted, if you get planted, if you allow yourself to get planted in a Bible preaching Bible-saturated church. Boom. God's goal is for you to produce an orchard. The people for generations can eat from your tree. Isn't that cool? You know, there's people in our church that have died and gone to heaven. You know, I've been a pastor. I'm 53. This church started be 23 years ago. And I was 30. And... Uh, we were asked to come across the lake. I know we have six campuses now, but in New Orleans region, across the lake, I was asked to come here. And I've had the privilege of pastoring people now long enough where people have been born in this church, funerals in this church. And, 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 and I think of people like Rip Mike, Pastor Danny's dad, who's in heaven now, who discipled hundreds. He got it. 
and he was a businessman, by the way, had a successful business. You can do this. By the way, you can have a successful business and be fruitful in the kingdom of God. You can do that. You can do that. But he understood the point of being planted because God called him to feed other people. I think of Mike Stevens. Mike Stevens, Jan is still in our church. Mike's in heaven now. Mike was, I love Mike. He'd always come up to me, he's real high energy. He started our prison ministry, he and Jan. They would go into prison two or three times a week and minister to prisoners. And now thousands of prisoners have been reached. How many are grateful for men and women like that that understand the purpose of planting? By the way, I, I don't know if Jan's here today at our Little Creek campus, but Jan, it's funny. Mike would tell me what to do, boss me around. Try, I, said, I loved him. I just loved him so much. I, I guarantee he's probably adjusted heaven a little bit right now. I loved Mike. How about Therese Rochelle, a great woman of God who died a couple years ago. She's in heaven. First family in our church. More disciples, Bible studies, feeding people. At the end of the day, can you go to heaven if you're not committed to a local? Sure you can, but you're living for yourself. You're living for yourself. You won't produce spiritual fruit. Oh, every now and then, accidentally, you may share Christ with somebody. But when you're involved in a healthy life, we're not the only church. Trust me. But a healthy church, winning people to Christ, making disciples, helping them get rooted, where your kids can grow and your family, you bring your neighbors to church. So, Pastor, what do you want from us? One thing. Just one, and I'll close. Get planted. Get planted. You know, we have a thing here called Next Steps. And Next Steps is, it's basically four classes. How do you get in? You can just text the word Next Steps to 822-822 or at any of our campuses. You can just go into the commons area, and there's people that are there. And they love to talk to you about how to get involved. I, when you go through Next Steps, and you get involved in a small group, and you're consistent. I understand people miss church. Please hear me. Yes, vacation. Yes, today. But those should be the exceptions. The norm should be, let us say unto me, let, let me say unto the Lord, it is good to go to the house of the Lord. It is, it is good. Everybody say, it is good. When we gather together in the presence of God, this is where encouragement comes. It's where hope comes. Faith comes. Joy comes. Flourishing comes. So we have done everything we can, and I'll say this in close, to help you grow in God, to help you flourish in every area. But it's going to take you being willing to getting planted in the house of God. And I guarantee you, if you do that, your life will start to change for the better. Doesn't mean you won't go through trials. Doesn't mean you won't go through situations. But I'm going to tell you, you'll have the durability. Boom. <laughs> Y'all saw that? <laughs> And you'll have the longevity to go through anything that comes against you. Come on. Y'all receive that? Y'all receive that? Word to, let me pray for you. I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here today. We thank you that you love us and you care for us. If you do not know Christ, with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, every one of our campuses, I'm going to ask the campus pastors to come on stage right now. If you do not know Christ, you're not sure about your relationship with God, I want to pray with you right now. Just one minute left. If you say, Pastor, I'm not sure if I die today, I'm ready to spend eternity with God. Here's what the Bible says. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of Jesus shall be saved. Question, have you surrendered your heart to Christ? Whether for the first time or maybe you've strayed away from God and you need to recommit your heart to Christ, rededicate your heart to Christ. Either way, we're gonna pray for you in just a moment. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Christ or I wanna rededicate my heart to Christ. I want to first get planted in Christ, and then I begin to walk that out with my brothers and sisters. But it starts first with committing to Christ. If you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus. They count of three. Would you just lift your hand up high so I can see it? One, two, three. Quickly. Hold your hand up high. God bless you all right here. God bless you right there. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. And everybody else, God bless you up top. God bless you guys. Pastor, pray for me. God bless you, sir. Yeah. I sense the presence of the Lord right now. Let me pray for you. Campus pastors are on the stage at all of our locations right now. We're going to pray together. Can we do that, church? Let's pray with those. This is the most important prayer they'll ever pray. Let's pray it right now. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today, a sinner in need of a Savior. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I let go of my past, and I turn to you. I turn to the cross. 
Say this. Say, Jesus, wash with your blood. Give me a new heart, a new life, a new reason to live. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the sealing work of the Holy Spirit and the word of the living God taking root deep in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name. Wow, what an amazing message. It was so good. But hey, we don't wanna just blow past this moment. We wanna take just a minute right now and acknowledge those of you who are making the decision right now to give your life to Jesus. As your church family, we are celebrating with you because we know that this decision you're making right now is the best decision you will ever make. Yes, and today you were made new, you were forgiven, and you are loved by God. And we are celebrating with you in this big decision that you were making. And hey, we just want you to know that we as your church family would love to come alongside you as you begin this brand new journey of following Jesus. That's right. You know, if you would click the link in the chat room or on the screen right now and fill out that short form, one of our pastors would love the opportunity to follow up with you, to hear your story and to resource you in your brand new life with Christ. And before we say goodbye, we just want you to know again that we are here for you. If you have any questions on what it means to follow Jesus, or if you have any prayer requests, we would love to partner with you and pray with you. So please let us know as we have hosts and pastors who are ready and trained to pray with you. With that being said, that concludes our service for this week. We cannot wait to see you next time. Have an amazing week.